Good evening. Welcome again to our midweek Advent service, the second of our three this year. Uh, once again, the order of worship will be on page 229 uh, if you brought a hymnal. Otherwise, everything will be up on the screen. Uh, we will begin with the opening hymn, number 345, Hark a Thrilling Voices Sound. O Lord, open my lips. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Together, glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ, King who comes to save us. The psalm for this evening is Psalm 24, we read responsively as it is printed in your folder, or on the screen, I guess. I have a folder. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, for he has founded it upon the seas. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord? He who has clean hands and a pure heart. He will receive blessing from the Lord. Such is the generation of those who seek Him. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors. Who is this King of glory? Lift up your heads, O gates, and lift them up, O ancient doors. Who is this King of glory? Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, 
as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. You may be seated. The first reading for this midweek Advent service is from Genesis chapter 16. Now Sarai, Abram's wife, had borne him no children. She had a female Egyptian servant whose name was Hagar. And Sarai said to Abram, Behold now, the Lord has prevented me from bearing children. Go into my servant. It may be that I shall obtain children by her. And Abram listened to the voice of Sarai. So after Abram had lived ten years in the land of Canaan, Sarai, Abram's wife, took Hagar the Egyptian, her servant, and gave her to Abraham, her husband, as a wife. And he went in to Hagar, and she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, she looked with contempt on her mistress. And Sarai said to Abram, May the wrong done to me be on you. I gave my servant to your embrace, and when she saw that she had conceived, she looked on me with contempt. May the Lord judge between you and me. But Abram said to Sarai, Behold, your servant is in your power. Do to her as you please. Then Sarai dealt harshly with her, and she fled from her. And Hagar bore Abram a son. And Abram called the name of his son, whom Hagar bore, Ishmael. Abram was 86 years old when Hagar bore Ishmael to Abram. O Lord, have mercy on us. The second reading is from Luke chapter 3. In the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, Pontius Pilate being governor of Judea and Herod being tetrarch of Galilee and his brother Philip, tetrarch of the region of Iturea and Trachonitis and Lysanias, tetrarch of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, the son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. And he went into all the region around the Jordan proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. As it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill shall be made low and the crooked shall become straight and the rough places shall become level ways and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. He said, therefore, to the crowds that came out to be baptized by him, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruits in keeping with repentance, and do not begin to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children for Abraham. Even now the axe is laid to the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. As the people were in expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Christ, John answered them all, saying, I baptize you with water, but he who is mightier than I is coming, the strap of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. So, with many other exhortations, he preached good news to the people. O Lord, have mercy on us. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch. In his days, Judah will be saved, and Israel will dwell securely. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. We continue with the hymn number 352, Let the Earth Now Praise the Lord. Let the earth now 
praise the Lord who has truly kept his word and at last to us did send Christ the sinner's help and friend. What the fathers most desired what the prophet's heart inspired, what they longed for many a year, stands fulfilled in glory here. Abram's promised great reward, Zion's helper, Jacob's Lord, him of twofold race behold truly came as long foretold as your coming was in peace quiet full of gentleness let the same mind dwell in which is yours eternally. Bruise for me the serpent's head that set free from doubt and dread. I may cling to you in faith, safely kept through life and Then when you will come again as the glorious King to reign, I with joy will see your face by your grace. Grace, mercy, and peace be to all of you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The word of God in which we base our meditation this evening is from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 1, the first two verses. The book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham was the father of Isaac, and Isaac the father of Jacob, and Jacob the father of Judah and his brothers. This is the word of the Lord. Dear friends in Christ, people who research their ancestry often hope to discover that they're related to some great historical figure. Perhaps some distant relative fought alongside George Washington at the Battle of Yorktown. Or maybe your ancestor was a pirate on the high seas. I actually have a famous name in my family tree. It turns out I am distantly related to Winston Churchill, who was Prime Minister of England during World War II. And he was probably the man who most clearly saw Hitler's thirst for power and the need for him to be stopped. Somewhere along the line, one of my dad's ancestors and one of Churchill's ancestors were brother and sister. My brush with greatness. Genealogies are fueled by a curiosity to see what wild stories might be discovered and how far back one can go. Jesus' family tree in Matthew goes back some 2,000 years, all the way back to Abraham. Not only is Jesus a descendant of King David, as we heard last week, but his line goes all the way back to Father Abraham. It's the kind of genealogy that would thrill even a casual observer 2,000 years. For us, that would take us back to the reign of Caesar Augustus, to the time of the birth of Christ. The tracing of Jesus' lineage back to Abraham would certainly be a great source of pride for any Jew of Jesus' day. It was that lineage by which they had long ago received the land in which they lived. But for those who came to understand, it wasn't the land, but Jesus himself who mattered. And Matthew gives us this genealogy all the way back to Abraham 
in order that we might understand that through the son God promised Abraham, that would be Isaac, and through his greater son, Jesus, Abraham and his descendants have inherited a better land, a better country. God's plan to make Abraham the father of many nations seemed impossible. The Lord God called Abram, later God would change his name to Abraham, from the land of Haran, from the family of an idol worshiper, and told him to go to a new land where he would make Abram into a great nation, even though Abram was well advanced in years. In fact, God goes so far as to tell Abram that all the families of the earth would be blessed through him. Then God promised Abram that Sarai, his wife, would give birth to a son and that his descendants would be as many as the stars in the sky. Now Abram was old and Sarai was considered barren, so all the evidence said that this would not be possible. But all things are possible with God. Abram believed God's word and the Lord counted it to him as righteousness. And from Abram would come Isaac, then Esau and Jacob, and then his descendants would continue to grow in number, all the way to the child born to Joseph and Mary, a fulfillment of God's promise to the patriarch Abraham. Most people who spend time researching their ancestry are disappointed to find that there is no one particularly famous in their family tree at all. Their ancestors were all common, ordinary people. The same can be said for Jesus' family tree, Abraham was actually nothing special. He was just another sinner in a long line of sinners. While his wife, Sarah, must have been quite attractive to catch the attention of two different kings, Abraham was so cowardly that he repeatedly would claim that she was his sister rather than stand up to defend her honor. When Sarah directed Abraham to seek an heir through her maidservant, Hagar, Abraham failed to honor Sarah and instead had a child outside of God's plan, a common discovery in family trees. The father of many nations passed on to his descendants a legacy of lies and lust, deceit and adultery. Father Abraham was really no one special. He was just another sinner, like his ultimate father, Adam, who would pass on to those who would come after him a heritage of hard hearts and deceitful deeds. Still, in Jesus' day, there were definitely those who found security in the fact that they were descendants of Abraham and felt that that was the source of special blessing from God. Those who claimed to be the children of Abraham were certain that they could never be slaves to anyone. They failed to see how they had been enslaved by their own sin. Like Abraham before them, sin had also ensnared them, and unless they were brought to faith, the promise of God to Abraham would be no good for them. It was not that God's promise would fail them, but that the descendants of Abraham had failed God. They rejected both the promise of God and the promised one of God. We are indeed children of Abraham. We also cannot be saved by our lineage, our obedience, or our good deeds. And like Abraham, we have failed again and again, fallen into the same sins repeatedly. Like the Jews in Jesus' day, we've trusted in our family or in our status. The only difference between Abraham and those descendants of his was faith. They all were sinners, but Abraham was fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Abraham is a lesson in humility for us all. We do not place our hope and our trust in a birthright or in family heritage, but in the one who was born for us at Christmas. God looked upon Abram and Sarai in their need, and in love he promised them a son. God looked upon the need of all his beloved children, and his solution, his answer, his perfect way of making things right was to promise a son. Now God most certainly kept his promise to Abraham by sending a son, Isaac, but the ultimate way that God met the name need of Abraham and Sarah and all of his children was by sending his own son, Jesus. For Jesus was the son of Abraham, sacrificed in the place of Isaac, in the place of Abraham, and in the place of all who are Abraham's descendants. And the promise God made to Abraham is fulfilled each time a child is marked by the sign of the cross on the forehead and on the heart. 
and baptized into the name of the triune God. It is accomplished when the promises of God are proclaimed and people are brought to saving faith through the working of the Holy Spirit. See, God continues to raise up children for Abraham. You are made sons and daughters of Abraham through faith in Christ Jesus. The promise God made to Abraham has been kept. God called us like he called Abraham before us, and we have received his promises by faith, just as Abraham did. During World War II in England, the most ominous sound one could hear was the air raid siren. For a nine-month period during 1940 and 1941, the Germans attacked Britain's airfields and then cities with nightly bombing raids. The sound of the siren would start softly, but would continue until it reached a spine-tingling, trumpet-like sound. The constant threat of the sirens over those months led to fear every evening as the sun would set. It was during this time that the Reverend Eric Milner White was serving as Dean of the King's College at Cambridge. Understanding the fear that gripped the people, he wrote a prayer expressing the people's emotions. Lord God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, by paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Such words describe the uncertain path that Abraham walked as he trudged toward a new unseen land. Abraham walked by faith, not by sight. He walked forward, trusting that God was leading him and his love supporting him. In these challenging times, we also face uncertainty. We are surrounded by many and great temptations. Life in this fallen world means the threat of mental sirens blaring is always there. For us, they do not signify impending bombs, but the fears are just as real. We worry about doctor's appointments and car repairs, surgeries and crop failures, viruses and lockdowns. We live with, an ang with anxiety over an uncertain future. But God's hand is still leading us, and his love is still supporting us. He forgives us for our fears and doubts for the sake of Jesus. The Holy Spirit sanctifies us and keeps us in the true faith, even when all around us are things that would drive us to despair. And in faith, we go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that the Lord is with us. Our confidence is that God has made us sons and daughters of Abraham by faith in Jesus. For we, too, are looking forward to a better country, the heavenly one, the land of promise. We face each day, therefore, with good courage, as we walk by faith and not by sight, and as we wait for the fulfillments of the promised land that lies ahead in the resurrection at the last day. We are bold to claim Abraham as our father, not because of something special about him, but rather because, like him, we believe the precious promises of God. In Jesus' name, amen. And now the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let my prayer rise before you as incense. We continue with the Magnificat hymn number 934, My Soul Now Magnifies the Lord.
magnifies the Lord. My spirit leaps for joy in Him. He keeps me in His kind regard, and I am blessed for time to come. For He alone who shows such might has done amazing things to me. His mercy flows, His name like light, remains in time perpetually. His arm is strong, His strength is great, He scatters those of proud intent and cast them down from high estate, and gives the low his nourishment. He feeds the hungry as his own, the wealthy leave with empty hands. He gives his help to Israel, his gracious promise always stands. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, hear my prayer. Stir up our hearts, O Lord, to make ready the way of your only begotten Son, that by his coming we may be enabled to serve you with pure minds. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Lord, on this night we remember in our prayers Blaine Schwingdorf, who will be undergoing surgery tomorrow, Earl Schultz and Rory Plough, who are hospitalized uh, with COVID-19, uh, the family of Jody Henderson, whose mother, uh, last name of Thorson, passed away yesterday. We ask you to be with these, your children, in their time of uh, need and sorrow and uh, remind them of your gracious presence and your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let us bless the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. You may be seated. We close with the hymn number 384 of the Father's Love Begotten. And we will stand for the last verse. began to be. He is Alpha and Omega.
omega, be the source, the ending, he of the things that are, that have been, and that future here shall see evermore and evermore. O oh, that birth forever blessed, when a virgin full of grace by the Holy Ghost conceiving for the Savior of our race and the babe, the world's Redeemer, first revealed his sacred face evermore and evermore. This is he whom seers in old time chanted up with one accord whom the voices of the prophets promised in their faithful word. Now he shines the long expected. Let creation praise its Lord evermore and evermore. O ye heights of heaven, adore him. Angel hosts his praises sing. Powers, dominions bow before him and extol our God and King. Let no tongue on earth be silent. Every voice in concert ring evermore and evermore. Christ to thee with God the Father and a holy spouse to thee, him enchant and high thanksgiving unending praises be, honor, glory, and dominion, and eternal victory, evermore and evermore.